yeah so we're recording as we said we're doing this every other friday um the a lot of the acf team are here today i'm ian paulson the product manager we've got liam gladdy we've got anthony bachel we've got matt shaw we've got mike davey from the wp engine um content team and i think we've got some of our support reps in here as well so it's great we've, we've got a full house um and thank you everyone else for coming some other notes this week again we have made it to the next round of the talk mags plugin madness i'm just dropping the link in the chat so if you haven't already voted for acf go vote for acf you can do it twice hopefully get us around to the next uh next round getting the ads in early and i like it well i mean you know we haven't even tweeted about it so yeah i'm just yeah that's true yeah uh, what else? This week, Damon Cook, who I don't think he's here today, he's from our DevRel Developer Relations Department. He did a preview of our new CPTs and taxonomy registration feature that's coming in ACF 6.1. Uh, he did that building a recipe site, and he also used it uh, used block patterns created with WP Engine's new pattern manager thing. So that also went up on YouTube this week. That's really good. If you want to catch up with that, uh, and if you hadn't seen, yesterday we released ACF 6.1 Beta 1, which is, um, yeah, the, the latest place you can get the custom post type and taxonomy registration stuff and some other uh, features we've got in there. As a reminder, the taxonomy and custom post type registration is going to be available in the free plugin and the pro plugin. Uh, and so if you want to go and get the beta, you can download it uh, in the pro form from your account on advancedcustomfields.com. Or you can get it from uh, the GitHub releases pages, release page even. So that's the blog post about the beta. If you want to catch up on some of the stuff we've got in there and find out more about how to uh, test things and con configure stuff, and that's where you go and get the free version. So we've got the Q&A feature again, as usual, in Zoom, which is along the bottom bar of the Zoom toolbar. Um, or you can always post some stuff in Slack. I don't think we had a proper uh, thought in terms of agenda for this time, but yeah, I'd love to hear if anyone's tried the beta version, like any feedback, any issues, any thoughts about the new features uh, and any other questions you've got, like hit us up. We've got the team here. We can hopefully, hopefully answer as much as possible. That sounds like a... oh. Yeah, there is a problem with Zoom versions and not seeing the Q&A, but it, you're very welcome to, well, it's such a small amount of people today, there's only 18, so either post your question in chat or feel free to unmute yourself and let's have a free-for-all chat if, if possible. Um, and if not, Conrad, can you post the question that that guy asked on the ACF Slack earlier? And I will answer that because I remember it and I was like, hey, I'll answer that tonight, but I can't remember what it is now. Oh yeah, yeah. Conrad was like, "Come along to ACF Chat Fridays." I was loving the fact that you were uh, plugging that as well. What was that question? So we got one in uh, about. Oh, there you go, Liam. Take it away. Oh, I, I, thought, I thought you were going to take it there, Anthony. I was going to be like, "Hey, this is cool." It, it's something that I, I run into a lot, and I usually have to do something like set a state that re refreshes the component. But that feels very hacky when I do it like that. So, be yeah, curious so, what you think. So, uh, it's uh, it's definitely an interesting one because, in theory, that should all just work, right? Um, so, I think we need to see the specific implementation you've got to see if there's any any quirks of it. How are you? So, are you passing context from an ACF parent block into a, a ACF block inside of inner blocks, or to a different, you know, to a a WordPress core block. So I'm not sure if any of those can use context. Yeah. So basically what I was trying to do, and it's just as a general example, <clears throat> um, so within the ACF block uh, itself and the block JSON defining the, um, so like using the post title, so, so core post title, um, pat, you know, use the, um, Specify in the block.json for the ACF block to to pass over some random variable as the post ID, um, so that way the post title can pick up on that. Um, and then so just, you're going you know, from the post title up or from the parent down? 
from the parent ACF block to the core post title as the inner inner block. Okay, so that yeah, so that's probably not supported because obviously we can only control ACF blocks in the sense of you know when we re-render them. So we we attach to for context changes that will trigger us to re-render everything inside of it, but I I don't think the core post title block would be aware that you've changed you know there's no way to say to that post title block hey you should be using this acf variable from context so you'd probably need to use a you'd probably need to create a second acf block to serve as that post title block that then could consume the context that you've sent down from the parent and maybe you could send like like the the gutenberg dispatch to where you could use the ID of the parent and change something and maybe force a re-render. That's another way. It's hacky. I, I kind of I yeah. do things like that in, in my personal box where I'll do a dispatch to the parent, change a piece of it, and then it makes it re-render. Yeah, you're definitely deep into the kind of the native WordPress React library there, though, rather than just relying on ACF to take care of you, <laughs> hide you away from that React world. I have a question here from Benjamin um, asking if there's a good way to copy content from flexible content fields on one page to another page. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. I mean, you could use like ACF has uh, API functions that can be used like you can there's functions for getting data from flexible content fields and you could use that to manually copy it over. But honestly, for something like that, I would probably just use like uh, my SQL itself and just copy the meta over. It's probably the fastest way to do it. Um, but I do know that eventually ACF might have some sort of data migration functionality. Um, for example, for post types, uh, when you rename a post type, uh, we're eventually going to add the functionality that it'll go through and rename the posts to make sure everything stays matched up. And that's something that we might be able to like repurpose way further down the road to moving content from posts one post to another it's the same sort of background meta update sort of thing yeah gotcha thank you yep. there's also um thinking about it in the kind of the new wordpress world there's obviously template parts but if you if it's something if it you know if it's not just a one-off thing and it's hey i want to display you know job adverts on four different pages or something then you could probably do it in a template part showing a of the flexible content and then dropping it into every page that matches where you want it to be so that would be done as in like an option oh so yeah that's that's one way we've had we've had some folks ask about this recently because they were building a headless site and wanted to share data across different things so yeah options pages work for that in the full site editing world there's a there's a dedicated thing called template parts that are meant to you know for headers and footers and sidebars and that kind of thing um but obviously you, you have to be building full site editor themes block themes for that right right got it i'd say, I'd say a good a good example of that would be the frost theme if you look at the, some of the like php files in there for the template parts you've got uh it'd be a really good reference what was the name of that i didn't catch the first part uh, frost said? Frost, Frost theme. It's a full site theme. Yeah, yeah. I think the GitHub repo is all out there. Okay, great. Made by Brian Card. Yeah, they released a new version of that this week. I really need to get on that. I want to see it. And, it's my favorite it. right now. I've been making yeah. all my sites with it lately. <laughs> we do everything in like 2023 or whatever the WordPress default is in all of our test sites. So we don't really get exposed to to a lot of what the you know, the new hotness in, in WordPress themes. Uh comrades. Uh, you asked about the br new browse field modal um, that is in the beta. I don't know if everyone's seen that. It's a, a kind of new way of selecting fields. Uh, for people that don't necessarily know what all the fields are, we kind of give a bit more of an explanation. Um, and asking if that will be available for developers as well. Uh, do you mean as a developer adding fields to that, comrade? Or do you mean actually placeholder, hey, can I make this modal appear on a different page? That's a good question. You can probably make that work because uh, we just, it's, 
a whole bunch. It's essentially a, uh, I can talk about complicated JavaScript things with Comrade because I know he understands it. But that we extend a, an ACF model that becomes that uh, browse field editor. So in theory, you could just include that wherever you wanted it, and it should just work. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of wrapper around it, but hey, that's that's a good thing. So if that doesn't work, then yell at us and we'll we'll figure out how to make that work. We obviously didn't think about. People might want to use that in other places, but yeah, it's a good idea. Sorry, I've just grabbed everyone's screen with a bit of a share just to demo no, that's this fine. quickly. Yeah, demo so this is something that is coming in six point one as well, and it's in the beta, as um, Liam was saying. And basically, this is just an improved. Uh, workflow or an improved experience around selecting the field type. So previously, obviously, it was just a drop down. Now we've kind of got a supercharged select two power drop down with a much better type to search. Ooh. Oh, this is because I've got a weird testing version where the actual, uh, it doesn't know if it's ACF Pro or not. But anyway, You're ignore that. Brain or something. <laughs> I know. Yes. Yeah, it's. it's and so this is the the browse field button where it brings up this modal and you've got a a better way to kind of view all the field types that are available and try and understand before you select them what they do what they kind of look like to the editors uh and you know try and differentiate between things like link and post object and why you, you might use the relationship field We've also got links to our documentation right there and then, so you don't have to kind of go elsewhere um, and, and necessarily get all that info. It's it's either here or then uh, link out to it, and we've grouped them in the same kind of groupings as we do in the in the drop down. So that's yeah, that's what we're referring to with that, uh, and hopefully that just makes it a nicer journey for people. Um, if you don't like this, as in. You, you don't need to browse fields, you know what the fields are, you know, you're kind of happy with your workflow, we've got a filter to turn that off and you just carry on you with a drop down. Um, but the, the thing I quite like about this is if you add a new field, and the first thing you want to do is select field type, you browse and you change to this, you can actually add your label there and then and do it. And it's all done in that modal. So the decision of what type, add your label, which then once you return, close the modal, it's already sort of filled out the name and the label there for you. So you can carry on editing your field. Nice. Ian, do you want to just do a quick run through of adding a, a post type as well? And I'll point out what's changed since alpha. Mm -hmm. Sure. So basically it's, it's mostly just polish, right? We were, we were actually in a pretty good place with alpha one. We, we kind of been a bit weird with our naming here. Alpha was because we wanted it to be targeted as developers and we knew it wasn't ready for everybody yet. And uh, beta is uh, in a really good place. So, you know, if you're comfortable using it, then feel free to go ahead and just yell at us if you find anything wrong. Um, but yeah, mostly it's uh, a, lo a lot of polish in this regeneration stuff. Um, so yeah, if you type in, type in some things now, Ian. In fact, if you, if you know offhand when you've already got registered. Yes, exactly. It, as opposed to trying to think up some sort of object <laughs> on the fly with a group of 40 people, because that's actually <laughs> impossible. It's impossible. Like, I, I don't even think of can think of anything. I this did test a... one, test two, test yeah. three, final, final. So what, what have we added? We've added the ability to easily regenerate labels or clear labels, because you may change your singular and plural label. And it's, yeah. it will regenerate them there, which is nice. And you can clear them, do it again, and overwrite them manually if you want to change that. We had to add that for us more than anything, because as we've been testing this, like we, we've been typing all the time, and it's been really frustrating to not be able to regenerate it. So we made sure we got that in for beta one because it was it was our biggest annoyance as well. What branch actually am I on? Hang on. Yeah, Ian's, that... on, a, Ian's on a weird version of this here this isn't the this isn't the final version let's just go and pull the right branch there we go. you're seeing live live code here this is the dangers of live, live coding MS. from a product manager i mean this is it's, it's awful isn't it you get a builder right the one time where are we release is it in all in develop now or is it in yeah 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 develop is uh is oh, where that's, we're at. E that's easier then yeah and just Beyond build. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll show uh, 
there's a question in chat about the Sharon admin bar being a boolean and it not actually being that in WordPress. Ian will show you how that is changing in the uh, in beta one from alpha and we have yeah we've solved all these issues so we can uh, we can run you through what that looks like now. Um, but yeah, you can specify the slug. You can you can change it around. Uh, we had our designer Dale uh, spend a bit of time rethinking that flow because it's not it, it, it. Obviously, in WordPress in code, it's relatively easy, but there's so many things that change depending on what you've got other settings. So we've had to kind of rethink that UI a little bit. So uh, yeah, so show an admin menu now has a parent that we can. You can is that what we're referring to now it's not just a boolean it's a uh show i mean it's, it's a yeah admin menu right. parent is what gets assigned to that so if you have if you put in tools page or tools.php there it'll get moved under the tools page instead of like on its own admin level what's this the libraries well it should have done <laughs> it might not be might need a refresh is it exactly tools? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, is it exactly tools.php, though, that top level? Because WordPress is very particular about the menu being. Or is it exactly slash right. tools also? Like, what is this? Just format? mouse over the tools section in. Mm, yeah, it so, is tools.php, but either way, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get that double test, double. Yeah. Checked. I think you want what you did want to call out was the fact that we've got this extra bits on. Yeah, I mean, supports there is new. So you see the add custom. That was the that was the ugly button that we made in pull down the new branch for so that you didn't have to see. Yeah, we, yeah. We we've sold all this nicely. Uh, this was yes. uh, this wasn't something we planned on shipping at all in six point one. Uh, but it, we had a couple of folks on Twitter ask say, hey, I use custom supports to enable this thing. Um, and you just, uh, if you create your own custom supports there, yeah, and you can just easily get rid of them or add more. It's, that's kind of nice. This is such a nice um, experience now, and it's it's good that we've managed to get that in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where are we? Yeah, just a little bit more improvement around the experience. The good news but, is I have typed tools.php in my build and it is working. So just ignore Ian. All right. <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure what's what's happened there, but yeah, gonna, it, it does work. I'm going to stop sharing now. <laughs> you can put tools.php in there. It's, it yeah, works. it's working on my end. That's what I was doing. Just <laughs> yeah, and, and Matt, was, Matt was also doing the same. He's held, you got the free devs on the call here. We were I don't like, know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> it's 9pm, guys. It. It's 20 past 9. Ugh. Yeah. We've got some more questions coming in. Why don't we? Yeah, we have one about the checkbox. I don't think we've answered yet. Yeah, go for it. Uh, but we got ACF checkbox. Is it possible to write a conditional to check for multiple checkboxes selected? For example, if only A is checked, do X. If only B is checked, do Y. And uh, if A and B are checked, do Z. So and this is just so like this is just in the conditional logic in fields, right? So you would need multiple checkbox with conditional, or is it like a group of checkboxes that would accomplish that? So you, that's the, I I, I want to say that's possible in code now. It might not be possible in the UI. So we we might be able to yeah, Conrad's nodding his head here because I we we can definitely pass arrays of conditional logic and multiple rules. But I'm not sure the UI lets you be that specific. This, this is a code question, not a not a UI question. Okay. All right. It We've seems possible. Because you logic. can pull the status mm -hmm. of one to do the next. Like it yeah. would need to you would need to get the field value of, of A to do logic based on C, I guess. I think you what you'd have to do is modify the conditional logic parameter of the field that was due to be shown based on the you know the the other logic. Um to be exactly what you wanted it to be, because that's the bit you probably can't say in the UI. Uh, but yeah, we'll look into that. And um, yeah, Mike is on the call. So uh, I'll, we'll get him to make a note of it and uh, we'll come back to you with a, a kind of a more concrete answer on that in, in the blog post write up that goes up probably sometime next week. Yeah, we're talking about conditional logic as well. There's a thing that's been on our, on our backlog for a while about 
just an improvement to how conditional logic works for things like taxonomy fields, where at the moment you can't just say, show this other field when this taxonomy field has this selected term, you have to just be like, you have to give it an integer and it's awful. Um, so we've kind of got that um, being queued up for some work at some point, because that is a bit of a pain point. Awesome. Comrade pasted the uh, the question from Slack uh, and we answered that already. That was the one about the, uh, the sh uh, admin. Well, actually, did we answer that one already? No, I'm not sure. And, and I was going to go back to him on Slack because I wasn't too sure. I guess that's a case of are we putting fields in like a custom post type list table, you know, yeah. and, and being able to filter on that, like a kind of like the admin columns plugin. Yeah, I think it's are we basically going to replicate admin columns? Yeah, I mean, we've got functionality in ACF. We've got a kind of we we've got a simple version of that on our on our backlog internal tracker of ideas where people just want to show fields in columns of post pages, custom post types, and and people then also want to do filtering, sorting, editing, bulk editing. Um, obviously, that then crosses over into territory of another plugin that does it really well, the admin columns and admin columns pro, but. At some point, you know, it may be helpful to have that feature in core. I just if if that's something that people want, then we'll, we'll try and you know listen yeah. and. And I, I think that's how that. it comes, right? We've we uh, we had a few people ask us, you know, why are we doing CVTs and taxonomies? You know, why you know, it's against what the plugin is? You're just turning it into a monolith. But when we, uh, when we when Delicious Brains took over the plugin, we sent out an email to everybody on the mailing list, and we're like, hey. Give us three things. What are your top three things that you would like ACF to do? And and post types and taxonomies was right up there, right? So it's it's interesting to get so many people be like, well, so why are you doing this? But then we've equally got as many people saying, hey, this is fantastic, and I'm so glad you're doing this. I wanted this for ages. So it's uh it's it's interesting. So I guess when you've got such a big user base, there's always going to be people that just you know, yeah, yeah, it's subjective to people and their workflows. But then you know what we're trying to do is. Is take something that is quite clearly an obvious workflow within WordPress of building sites, and when you when you want to work out the data structure of your site, you create a custom post type, and then you might add fields, and then you might add taxonomies, and then you might go and add fields again. But having that all in the one plugin, rather than broken across another plugin, or then having to bounce back into your functions.php or a, a plugin to register the post types, having that workflow all smoothed out and handled within ACF. Is valuable and and there's clearly a load of people who see that so yeah we hope it's going to be useful to people but obviously there's many ways to do things if you don't want to do it that way we can you'll be able to disable the custom post type stuff in the plugin so you won't see post types and taxonomies in the left hand menu you won't have any of it booted and loaded so yeah that's yeah. what that's what i was going to say me and matt obviously Every, everything we do when we add a new feature to acf we're thinking about the performance side of it and we know that they'll that was going to be a question some people asked, right? Hey, you're adding this stuff. Is it you initializing this you know, whole extra layers of, of things that I don't care about and I don't need? So that's why that filter literally shuts us off loading any of our classes to do with post types and taxonomies, and we don't even load them. So it is it's it's essentially the same as ACF 6.0 if you if you enable that filter and you want to turn it off. Um, but we also know that the our UI is actually quite nice, right? Our, Dale, our designer, is, is a really good UX designer, and, and what we built is is really nice, and I like it. I've used like uh, uh, what's the G Generate Press, right, Ian? That's the website that lets you just kind of click a whole bunch of buttons and get the code out. Yeah, I actually now use ACF to do that when I want to create post types because you can go through use our UI, save it, go to the export page, and then we just dump you out the the raw PHP if you want that. Um, or you can do it as JSON. You know, we have a lot of people that can like to commit ACF JSON to, to their GitHub and stuff. So everything's kept in sync. And so it all just works the same way with the same performance benefits of, of each method, obviously. Christian, I've just answered your question in the chat, but I just wanted to call it out from everyone else. It, obviously you've, you've had a bug with the beta and you've tried to provide feedback from the support channel and obviously not had a great experience there being asked for a video recording i'll feed that back to the support team but but feel free to post stuff in github if you need to um we'll, we'll try and take feedback from everywhere at this point in time but i'll, I'll try and make that a bit better in the future yeah uh, you can also you can also tweet us christian if, if that's easier um i 
I'm I'm pretty good at checking Twitter and, and replying to folks. So whichever's the easiest way for you, honestly, you, you, know, you guys are doing us a favor by testing this and giving us feedback. So we want to make it as easy as we can for you. Um, out of interest, feel free to from... yeah, feel free to type in the bug because I'm kind of interested now. <laughs> yeah, I got a follow up from Benjamin here. Um, is there a reference or guide for the data schema that ACF uses? within the WordPress database. Uh, unfortunately, not to my knowledge, but that is something that I think, I think there's bits and pieces of it. Like if you search for something like that, you might find like a couple support threads, things like that. But it'd be a really good idea, I think, to um, publish like an official guide that, you know, for different field types, like here's how the flexible content or the repeater field stores data um, so that folks have something to reference. But um, in general, you're in regards to your specific question, you're probably just going to be checking the post meta table for uh, the post ID for the page that you want to copy over and then looking for anything that looks just pulling ACF. everything over. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, got it. Also, just to say on that, Conrad here, uh, Ian put a link to his product, ACF Extended, is uh, he has a mode uh, in his plugin that lets you view the raw data a schema that's saved. Uh, I really should know exactly what it's called so I can tell you off the head, out of my head. It's some, yeah, I'll tell you what, Conrad, you can just type it. I don't want to get it wrong. Develop my, I, that's what I was going for, but I was like, hey, I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah, there we go. And you can just, so you can use that to see what we're actually saving. It actually makes it easier to manipulate things as well. So if you, you know, if you really want to get into the weeds of ACF and that low level data stuff, then, uh, then, yeah, you can dive in with ACF Extended. Oh, cool. Check it out. We've nice. got a question in the sidebar here about um, <clears throat> flexible content field and some of the improvements coming for that. Because um, uh, so we did we did launch some uh, like the UI improvements so that you can uh, build them in a way that makes a little more sense. But uh, I like the suggestion of a modal um, to kind of get a more visual. It is it that seems to be like the thing to solve there, right? Is uh, you want more of like a visual uh, representation of what's changing? Yeah, that the, yeah, we've done this as Ant said. We've done the stuff in the admin side of the plugin, and we are wanting to focus more on the content editing experience. So, making it easy for ed content editor to add the right layout. Um, and and maybe have a, a better visual way of doing that. I think the flexible content field needs some work. Um, it, th there is improvements to the flexible content field in ACF Extended, uh, Connor's plugin again. Um, so that because we did have a show, uh, a case study on the blog um, showing about a, an agency called Rare Loop that used ACF Extended and ACF with the flexible content field to have like a, a much better experience for their editors. Um, which is probably worth checking out. I'll, I'll dig out the link on that. Um, but yeah, we we do plan to have some improvements to the to the the content editing side um, for the for that field. We've got a, we've got a lot planned. Basically, there's a there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff in the backlog. Um, obviously, things will take some time. Things will be prioritised, but we'll we'll hopefully try and um, get on with some some of the important things. I'm really happy to. That people are just shouting out things that are important to them, even if it's not related to CPTs, the beta, or whatever. Just like what what features are on your mind, what I'm are the happy pain to points. See that there are a lot of things we're working on. So, <laughs> yeah, great. I've got a question that's coming from a non dev maker of sites. Um, you know, I dabble in, in some of the code, but I don't code. So a lot of the conversations I hear around ACF, folks are talking about using it in ways that I don't use it. Um, I'm coming from using Toolset that I've used for years. Um, and now for reasons that probably most of us know, trust them less and less, and it's been problematic. Happy to see what's coming into ACF. As far as on the front end, do you have because ACF has been using plugins and for a lot of the extending of, but that whole equivalent of what toolset had in views and now in toolset blocks, 
but in terms of the filtering and the and the um even faceted filtering and and tables and maps and then the output um i don't know if that's anywhere in the future for it if that's like no that's another plugin and what are the favorite plugins as i'm trying to move from from tool set even looking at like pods and all so I, mean, I have the license i'm ready to go i've used it in one capacity but for those sites where i'm listing out you know things in a table and helping people like dig deeper in and then and uh what are the what are the favorite tools for that yeah that's a really good question and it's something we we've we talked about a lot internally right because especially in the in the blocks world there's an awful lot of front end output and and obviously acf has fields for google maps and all that kind of thing and, and there's people that ask the question of well why is there no way to you know well you just dump me the data why why is there no way to output that and there's a there's this, I can understand both sides of it, right? There's people that obviously just want the output. In, in my personal opinion, I, I think that should be separate to what ACF is because even if we, we're we the people that produce that same, you know, that second plugin, then keeping those two things separate so that you are dealing with data and then you're dealing with output as, as, a, as a separate sort of strategy kind of feels like it makes sense. But there are, the lines get more and more blurred, I think, with the way Gutenberg is going and and yeah, just the sort of possibilities with blocks. Um, and the more you kind of introduce admin interfaces to do things like creating blocks and, and things like that, then you know, do we then start allowing templating of, of what that block looks like on the front end? And you know, that's that's all questions that we have to kind of think on over the next few months and, and figure out what that next step is. Yeah, one of the one of the complications is like one of the things that that inherently is just a problem in, in Gutenberg is versioning your changes because it's it's really easy for us to change like attributes and things like that for for the the data, but when you get into the markup that that interprets the data, you could hit so many issues for just an update to keep everything in sync. It's it's kind of uh, it's implementation specific. <laughs> At least that's my view. Yeah, and I think just just to echo what Liam was saying. ACF has always been front end agnostic in the sense that you you have developers building in so many different ways. You know, they'll have back end developers and they'll have front end developers and they're just passing them the, the field data and they'll do whatever they want with it and it'll be building in whatever front end stack. Um, and I think, yeah, there isn't there isn't anything we have right now and, and there isn't anything planned, to be honest. Um, I think it would be a really good exercise maybe for us to um, to have some form of blog post that explores to different ways and maybe calls out any other third party tools there are. But yeah, that isn't something that I think ACF will focus on for the moment. It'd be cool if we had like uh, demo blocks or like a like starter blocks so that people can just grab like the Google Maps one and then just start building off of that and have a repo out there. Yeah, I agree. And so there was a there's a product called acfblocks.com um, that uh we kind of the guy the original developers wanted to hand it over to us and we said yeah sure yeah we'll look after it um but it's uh acfblocks.com it's got a bunch of examples i think a lot of them are out of date and you know they're for legacy versions of wordpress and things have changed a bit so i think the plan i'll look at ian for this is that we will take a lot of those blocks modernize them and then publish like a blog post essentially with the code and kind of guide you through hey Hey, so you've got a Google map. Here's here's how to output that, and I th and I think that's that's where ACF can add the the kind of that front end output is by helping people figure out how to do it. There's there's also an argument of well, hey, WordPress has all these core blocks. How do I how do I show my post metadata, my field data in those core blocks, right? And that is a problem that we think that we should be solving. Um, and it's something that we've been talking about recently, whether there's a way to, to nicely output, you know, tag that, Hey, in, in the middle of this paragraph block, I want to show this piece of post meta, um, and we can kind of get smarter and smarter about, you know, well, Hey, the, it's, it's just a date field or it's just a text area right now, but that could expand into, into those kind of deeper blocks. And, and obviously the block library and, and pattern libraries and all that kind of stuff makes this easier anyway, because you can end up with 
a, a pattern library that is this big header block. It sorts out the images for you, and then we just show your ACF data in those. And I think the block editor probably is the future of of making making that you know that the the output side of ACF probably comes from from the Gutenberg block editor rather than anything else that we could write. But yeah, I mean, uh, this question. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh sorry, I was going to say a, a lot of that is a, is the assumption based on Peter. If you're using the block editor, and maybe you know, yeah, that's true. That if you're not, and there's other ways of doing things. That the, going back to the question about other plugins and displaying stuff, Facet WP is a plugin that comes to mind that has good ACF integration for displaying, sorting, filtering data on the front end. Um, but yeah, we we'll obviously try and. Yeah, no, it's been great. Um, the, the various, um, I mean, the block editor is what I use, and certain block, whether it's um, Cadence or um, gener generate blocks, being able to use dynamic data, that that stuff's easy. Laying out a page the way I want, using all the data that I put in a custom post type is easy. Having that that search page, the listing, the 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 filtering, I've got uh, one client that has a way of, they're, they're a tool manufacturer and they have this, we've created a photo library and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things that may be in a photo. So if somebody's interested in a particular, you know, a magnetic work holding piece and all, and to be able to take that library of photos and then just by, you know, click, click, click. And, and now, now you're seeing just the photos of, the tools or the setups of the tools that are are what you want for you, you know that part replicating that um, without using the tool set views um, is kind of where I'm at. I mean, not to be too banging on tool set, but that's you know that's just the case of where things are right now with that. So, but that's I use that that interface now to get to now I can lay out a page that really shows the details and. However, I want to take all the fields and output them, but the in between um, taking a whole lot of information, it's that. So the facet uh, WP, for example, would be something I'll look into. I've, I've I've kind of poked around at a few of them. That was one. There's there's been a few others that I see that are out there that that might help. But some of them are just. I guess I get used to some of the things that were baked into uh, toolset views. Um, that just. You know, you get used to something, and here's the table output, and you can the link is in the you sorting it and filtering it down. So that's kind of you know going from what you had to now replacing it is is my challenge right now. But uh, thanks yeah. for helping yeah. me. No, yeah, I mean that is. is that is still helpful because you know it, it would be a good opportunity for us to look at toolset views and see whether or not there's something that like our block examples could could try and fill that gap. But yeah, thank you, Peter. I think this is something that WordPress is going to get better at in time as well, right? If you think that the query loop block only came in in what two, two, almost three, depending on the, if you include six point two, uh, and that's the kind of thing. It, it's kind of on WordPress to solve that problem when you're talking about the block editor, right? Because it's going to be the thing that handles all the query loops and the and the configuration of it. And I know they're adding more and more to that query loop block every time. And so when you get to a point where you can then start using you're essentially adding facets to that same query, and then you get what you're you're expecting, right? You have a, a second block that controls the the, the query loop block, um, and that kind of relates to Christian's question in chat about um, inner yeah. blocks in in Gutenberg version two, talking about context, passing data from parents to children, and how it's quite messy right now. And the yeah, I completely agree, it is, but that's it's not that's not our code, right? That that's that's a WordPress core function. And, and all we do is is provide support for it. So you know, we we say we we will allow consumption of of that context system that WordPress wrote. So yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. I, your best bet for that kind of thing is to is to go and raise an issue on on the on the Gutenberg uh, GitHub and describe how it isn't working for you right now and, and how they can make it better. And that, that's the kind of feedback I'm sure that they would love to have. I know Anthony works on on WordPress core, so. He can, uh, yeah, he, can, he can tell you the best place to give that feedback. I was going to say, I mean, even the illustration here of like the the solution that you came to feels kind of wrong. I've found that 
that it, it is the right way to do it. Like there, there is a dispatch event and the reason that exists is so that we can pass context to and from different blocks. So it's the official way. I think it, it is, it is just a little abstract to mentally map how that's working together and thinking about like the state, especially with like react stuff, you're constantly having to think of like, well, if I change this data, does this refresh? Do I need it to refresh? How do I listen for it? And it's just too much of that, I think, but it, it's also kind of inherently like that is part of how React works and, and that's what makes it great. Like <laughs> it reacts. <laughs> uh, we're almost out of time here. And so Benjamin, your question in the Q and A, uh, some interesting uses of the ACF JavaScript API. I think that sounds like a really good blog title. So let us let us run with that. Uh, and we'll get we'll get a blog post. I'm running up. it through Chat GPT right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, <laughs> it's really tough to pick stuff like that off the top of our heads, right? We'd need to go through and see. Most people use it to do more complicated things that aren't public or you wouldn't know uh, are specific to ACF. So uh, yeah, comrade, expect me to prod you soon to to, to to see if you know of any any good examples we can use to uh, to write about in a blog post. Yeah, that sounds good. Where are we? We got one more. We got one, one minute. More in the one part. minute for yeah for that one before we wrap yeah. up. So higher level question: ACF relies heavily on meta boxes. At some point in history, there was talk about uh, deprecating those. I'm not sure if it's still in the WP docs, but it used to say something like devs are encouraged to move from meta box boxes to blocks. I uh, also think meta boxes don't integrate very seamlessly with the block editor. Curious of your opinion, long-term perspective ACF, uh, and even the role of the post meta in general. Um, I mean, what is if meta boxes are deprecated a few years from now? And, and one thing I'll mention with that is that Gutenberg right now, there's this like big scary iframe that everyone's kind of working around. And one of the things that they're looking for to not have that iframe in the page is if you're using meta boxes. So it it seems for right now to be supported and something that, that WordPress is working around and keeping in the experience. So I don't anticipate that core would just remove something like that without it just working in the future. So I think that'll be fine long-term, um, but yeah, it, it is a valid thing to ask because I, I'm not too sure like what the answer is because we don't have a clear path on what the editor state with like the iframe and all that is gonna be. So what, so one of the things on the ACF side that is on our roadmap and will be happening hopefully in the next few months will be uh, allowing you to store, uh, basically instead of storing data on a block, saving that data back to the page. So at that point you could use a, a, a template, a post, custom post type template uh, to specify a single ACF block. And then we would just, you know, the, the block editor would render, you couldn't add and remove blocks. You just have this one fixed block and its data would be saved to them, to them yeah to the post meta the same way that data is now in the same way that meta boxes work um so that's that's kind of the the transition towards that obviously that doesn't solve every problem um especially you know if you want to have that and actual page content this is a problem wordpress are working on and the, if you if you go take a look at the the gutenberg uh github there's a whole bunch of proposals on on ways that, to do that because they want to get rid of the meta boxes being on the screen and probably move them to a different tab or or something like that. But the thing to say is they are deprecated, right? Meta boxes are deprecated now, but if you're in the block editor, so they've already made that decision. They know that they can't just turn that off uh, because so much legacy and so much history re relies on it. And they aren't providing a way to, to, to get that in, in the block editor right now. So much like the iframe that Anthony was talking about that got pulled from from WordPress 6.2 because they have to kind of go back to the drawing board and think of a back and pat solution. It's kind of on on WordPress to decide where they take that and we just kind of have to go along with the ride and make sure we're compatible at every step of the way, which is you know, what we'll do with ACF. Um, you know, we're not going to plastic editor was supposed to be removed two years ago, right? And, and it's still here. And it, it doesn't show any signs of actually going because too many people rely on it. But if they do, and then we'll we'll make sure that ACF has a way to to enter data in a in a way that makes sense for for the users. And we have a pretty good working relationship with Core. I was really surprised at how quickly we were able to kind of bring up the issue with the iframes, and then they reverted it. I didn't even I honestly didn't even expect it to be reverted. I thought we were just going to try and force through some kind of fix. 
So uh, the core team is definitely working with us on making sure this is smooth. And sorry, Ian, we went over time there. Well, no, that's fine. No, it's been really useful. And I, I, thanks everyone for turning up. But yeah, we probably should wrap up and uh, let everyone finish off their day. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for answering, asking the questions. And yeah, it's been good to have some discussion and yeah, get, get some more uh, clarity on things in the short term and the long term as well. But yeah, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you.